Okay, so this is our class that we are going to have over the spring break, which has now been um, extended to next Tuesday. And then everybody's supposed to teach online for the next two weeks after that, which I find hilarious because most faculty don't know how to teach online. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So let's look at module five, irresistibly engaging an assessment. Uh, this will be a two-parter. Uh, we'll do irresistibly engaging today. And then next uh, Thursday, we'll do the assessment piece. This is a shout back to the good Dr. Fullen. Let me check something real fast here. Yeah, just want to make sure I was recording. Uh, this is a shout back to the good Dr. Fullen. Um, as you remember, he talks about that, that learning situations uh, that are going to develop into that classroom, the illuminating, the virtual classroom, it needs to be irresistibly engaging. It needs to be elegantly efficient and easy to use. Technologically ubiquitous, 24-7, and steeped in real-life problem solvings. Meaning that we should have, and this goes to his other book that he's written called uh, Deep Learning, his six C's, which is about critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creative thinking, imagination, character education, and citizenship. Citizenship. Um, depending upon who you talk to, it could mean digital citizenship or it could just mean citizenship. Um, I take it as digital citizenship. And as you can see, he says, it's clear that schooling would have to be radically overhauled to meet these criteria. Well, he's not kidding. But I think we have a model that we have been playing around with um, in this class. And I think that that model looks like something like the Google Classroom. Now, my problem with this is uh, 10 years ago, when I first started teaching this kind of stuff, there was nothing like Google Classroom out there, except there were a couple of what I would call homework assignment uh, uh, CMSs, content management system. And that was the, the one that was used quite extensively with something called Edmodo. Uh, then after Edmodo, there was Schoology, and then Angel was in the mix, Moodle was in the mix, Canvas was in the mix, and then you had uh, Blackboard, of course, being in the mix, and then you had the Google. And the Google was the last one to the party. And of course, what the Google brings to the party is their enormous resources for storage more than anything else. Uh, I'll be quite frank with you. I'm pretty much a fan of the of the Schoology. I really like the look, the feel of Schoology. Um, I can do better things inside a Schoology uh, class than I can inside a Google Classroom. Now, the beauty of the Google Classroom, and I think we, we all have uh, understand this is is in its simplicity and the fact that it has things connected to it um, and I find it interesting that uh, the connectivity of it is something that all these classes all, all of these have had but the beauty or not the beauty, but what's happened with the Google Classroom, it's like this giant 300-pound um, gorilla that has entered into the room, and everybody is saying, look at that 300-pound gorilla. We should do something with it. And that's what we're going to show you tonight. A lot of this stuff is very easily, easily connected to your Google Classroom. A lot of this stuff can be found, um, and I don't... I don't go too deep into this because there's so much out there. Um, Jessica, this past week, showed me something that's in her Google Classroom that I had never seen before that was really, really cool. So there's all kinds of stuff out there. I'm going to show you uh, stuff 
based upon the fact that it can be easily connected to your Google Classroom. I think that's my where where my benchmark is for all of this. So when we go in here and look, uh, let me go back and make sure that we get this because I don't want to lose it. You've got to view this through the this lens here of these four criteria that he puts out there. That they're irresistibly engaging, elegantly efficient, technologically ubiquitous, and steeped in real life problems. And then as I said, these deep learning goals, what he calls the six C's. Um, I think this is where I think the challenge of having a Google Classroom is where we need to be focused. Sure, we need to talk about organization. We need to talk about how we put stuff together. Uh, Jessica and I were having a really good conversation about how she uh, gets kids engaged in her Google Classroom. And that is, I think, the, the conversation that we really need to be having. Uh, the nuts and bolts of using Google Classroom, not that hard. Um, I do a training here at U of L um, that meets uh, where I basically walk people through how to become Google Teacher Certified. It's not hard. When we get done with that, what I really would like to have the conversation is in the six C's. Because I think this is where we need to have we need to be looking at our Google Classrooms and are we doing this pursuit of deep learning goals for these six areas that he talks about? Okay. Now, looking in this module, this folder, we divide it into two parts, irresistibly engaging and assessment. We'll do assessment next week. Today, we're going to do this. So I'm going to start off with uh, Bunsey. Buncee is a simple one-stop shop where you can create interactive presentations that can have just about everything in it that you could want. So I'm going to click on the Buncee. I'm going to go in and I'm going to log in to my Buncee account. And I'm going to do that with uh, my googly. And for, for those of you who are wondering why, you know, why are you using your Google? Because it's, it's because now I have, I'm in the Google verse. And so therefore going from my site, what I create here into my Google classroom is not easy or not hard. It's very simple. OK, so we're going to start. We're going to click on the plus sign. And you can start with either using templates. If you want to, which is their version of their version three. Uh, I haven't really looked at the templates all that much. I tell you what, let me go through and we'll do the Buncee two and then we'll come back and look at Buncee three. So I'm going to start here. And if you've done any kind of design work in slides or PowerPoint, um, goodness, you know, I could go on and on. Well, our, our Pictochart or infographic, this stuff starts to get, you know, really obvious to you. So I'm going to look at a background, uh, decide what I want to do in terms of the, the look I want to have on all of my slides. And I'm going to go and get a simple look. I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, there's there's the one you'd want, Steve, right there. Uh, and I'll click on that one. And then I'm going to say for just I'm going to say this for this particular page. Now, if I'd said all, as you can see over here, see I can add more slides if I want to. And then up here in the upper left-hand corner, I need to put a, t a title to this. So I'm just going to call it. Oh, I'm not being very creative today, so I'm going to call it test. Okay. And I can turn on things like web, web accessibility. So if I put stuff in here that needs to get out to the web, I can. Look at that. I got text to speech. I got all kinds of things I can do. Okay. 
And I'm going to now click to add an item. And this is where the Buncee stands out. So as you can see, I can put all kinds of things into my Buncee. I can put in a text box. Here's my text box. It's just like every text box we've ever used. Yeah. Simple, simple, simple. Uh, I can move the text box around again. It's just like every text box we've ever used. Got a problem here in that the I need to change the color of my text. It looks like. And to do that, I come over here and I can click on where I've had it. And then I can come down here and I can change the color of my text. OK, so that's where all that stuff lives. And then if I want to change the size of it, I can come here. I can change the size of it. I can do whatever I want to do in here. If I need to get rid of it, I can just say, yep, please go away. I've gotten rid of it. The other things I can put in here is they have these cute animations now. I, you know, part of me is like, um, okay, <laughs> what are we doing here with these animations? Do they really do anything? And as you can see, they really have, goodness gracious, they have really upped their game when it comes to the animations here. Kind of cool. So let's see, uh, let's go into Steam and see if there's anything in Steam that I might be able to use. You got some gears. I'm going to assume these gears move. Um, oh, look, I've got a satellite. Let's see what else I've got. Oh, there you go. So in what I'm doing, let's go ahead and put that one in. I'm going to add it. And there it is. Now, notice that right away, um, if I wanted to, I can change up my background. So I just double clicked on it. And I can go in here and I can look for maybe a more appropriate background than just my little and I got all kinds of backgrounds I can choose from here. Let's see if I got a space one in here somewhere. And let's do a quick search. I thought it was right up there at the top. There we go. Bang. This is what I want. I'm going to use it for all. All right. So I've got myself a cool background. I've got this nice little um, graphic going on. What else can I add? Well, I can come back over here and I can let's go back in and add some text. And with my text, I could go ahead and decide what I want to say. There we go. We got one up here that doesn't show up very well. I'm going to go back and use this one. And I don't know why I'm having trouble with the, the text boxes all of a sudden. The text boxes don't want to play nice. Get rid of that one. Okay, now we've got a text box. There we go. So I can type in here. I can go back over here. I can add uh, videos. I can add whatever I want to put in here. I can import an URL. Uh, we can go ahead and we can do the classic, you know, YouTube thing. It, right huh. did I do a YouTube thought I did
Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes things just don't want to play nice. And I knew I was in trouble when I sat down today and I tried to um, look for or I was trying to start class and my Chrome crashed several times. So I'm not sure what that's about. I just threw I just threw something in here to see what would come up. And we've got these 360. This is kind of neat. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we throw one of these in. And let's see. Let me pick a color here that shows up better. There we go. I hope you're getting the idea. And I apologize for all the floundering around YouTube again. Shall we? Let's try the YouTube since we did a pretty good job with that 360 thing. I'm not sure what that's about. Why the 360 or why the YouTube isn't working. But I think you're getting the idea. You've got all kinds of things to play with here. Um, let's do a web image. and see what we can come up with in terms of finding images. Let's see. I knew we'd be OK. And one more. So I'm going to put in a multiple choice question. And I can put in E-A-R-T-H, M-A-R-S, J-U-P-I-T-E-R, V-E-N-U-S. And I'm indicating which one's the correct answer. Bam. Done. Okay. So now I have this. Uh, let, we need to change up the color because it doesn't show up very well. There we go. And I can bring over my little picture that goes with it. You get the idea? So you have this ability in here to create anything and everything. In other words, you can build a very... Um, you can build a very easily build. And here's here's what it looks like. And you can swirl around in there and take a look. Kind of cool. So there is my little quickie that I just made, which is please. You'll do a much better job. Now, how do I get it out of here and, and go somewhere? There you go. Who can view this? Anybody with the links? I can turn on commentable so people can actually um, have it. I can share with students. In other words, if I have a Buncee account, the beauty of having a Buncee account is that you can actually share it. In other words, it'll come up here. If, if I had students in here, it would come up with the students in here. And there's our friend. So if I click now on my Google Classroom, and I want to share it to my Google Classroom, there's where I would put it. So as you can see, I could assignment, I can ask a question, make an announcement, create the material. If I come down here and I create the material and I say go.
And I can give it a title, Buncy for Planets. And as I said, if you have a um, an account with Buncy, it's not expensive. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't buy it individually. I would get my school to buy it because it's cheaper. Um, then you have the ability to. You see what I'm doing here. I'm just organizing my look and feel. And now I'm going to post it. And it's in my Google Classroom. Simple as that. And that's the thing. All of this now, because of the Google Classroom integration, because of the hooks that are in the Google Classroom, is very, very simple to put in. So that was our Buncee. I'm going to go ahead and pop out of it. And let's go look at another stuff. So that was Buncy. Let's go look at simulations. This is really interesting. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to drop down a couple levels here. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to go into right here. I'm going to do the FET. So what is FET? FET is designed for teaching math, physics, science, uh, it is some of the best stuff that's out there. And what I like about it is you can either go to it through a grade level. So in other words, we can look at middle school. And now what we're do doing is we are seeing all of the various simulations that are available that are have been identified. And they do that by standards. OK, so it's not just, you know. They do it by standards. And I'm looking for the one that I really like, which is, well, there's eating and exercise. That's a good one. Let's try the energy spark. Okay. Now, when you look at this, what you can see here is you can embed this. You've got a couple of choices here. You can take this embed code and put it into that wiki space that we made, um, or that Google Sites, excuse me, that web page that we made. You can do it that way. Or you can take the code, I'm sorry, the link, and then you can go ahead and put that in there. Now, some of these simulations, actually will go directly into the Google Classroom. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a link. See that one? This one has, an, has a direct connection over to the Google Classroom. So once again, you have the ability to go in, pick the classroom, pick where you want it to go, Let's go ahead and just put it in here. And I'll say go. And as you can see, here I am again. You know, I'm back to all my students. I can put a title into it. I can add it to wherever I want it to go in terms of um, the topic. So you see, some of these have the Google Classroom built into them. Some don't. And that's the part of it that does kind of, it's like, why do you do that? I would like for it to be, all of it would be available in the Google Classroom. Um, there you go. So you put them in, they click, they come here. And then, in the, and of course, in the Google Classroom, you would have something that would read like, uh, follow this link, um, experience the balancing act. Notice you've got all kinds of other stuff here that you can use. OK, they don't just leave it out there for you. They give you directions. They show you how to do it. Um, and you could take anything you need from here and then put it in with your uh, Google Classroom stuff. So you've got and here's the related uh, uh, the different parts. Now, notice this one. This we looked at this first one. This one doesn't have the Google Classroom thing. Don't know why. But that's OK, because all I got to do is come up here and grab that. OK, that will take me back to this page. 
not hard. So that is the good old FET. Now let's look at, these are social studies simulations. These come from Washington State Council for Social Studies, a good place, good place. And you've got articles, but here's what you're looking for right here. And this one cracks me up. For those of you, anyone who's taught in an elementary school, this you should look at this and, and have a chuckle. Um, good old Oregon Trail. So here it is. It's actually been put online. It used to be in uh, every Apple lab that I can think of and uh, in Mac labs for that matter. Oregon Trail. Now, again, what you'll have to do with the Oregon Trail is you'll have to use the link that's up here that you can then send kids to. And then there's gizmos. Gizmos uh, is a paid site. Uh, I'm in it for free right now, but it, it only allows me in here for, uh, I think it's 14 days. And again, you've got more science, um, good stuff. And I can go in and I can look things up based upon Kentucky standards, which really, when you're talking about science, it's kind of, we're all in this together under NGSS. Um, Circuit Builder is a fun one. And you can, okay. Now, this is the only problem I have with uh, the good folks at Gizmo. When you come down here to do a share, they don't give you the ability to share it out as a um, into the Google Classroom. What you can do, of course, is you can go up here and you can grab this, but it's just not as elegant as it would be if you could have it um, that would connect over to the Google Classroom. This one's fun, by the way. If you've never done it, it's worth looking at. So you're putting your things into a simulation of a circuit and then you add all the pieces in kind of cool okay. and you can show the electron flow you can do all that kind of neat stuff turn on the switch good stuff that's gizmos i'm okay with gizmos i kind of like it um but like I said, it's an account. Now, here's the one. If you're a, a, a PBS or if you have a state like we have in Kentucky, we have KET. Boy, you're not, you can't beat this right here. So you've got it. Now, this will do everything. It doesn't just do the math stuff. It has everything. Well, let's see. Health and physical education is right there. So it has everything in it that you can think of. And if you go in and click on a particular topic, what it will do is it'll give you things to look at, to play with, and it gives you multiple sources. And then there you go. So I have everything I need here that I can then go ahead and add it into my class. Uh, and goodness gracious, I, I can't think of uh, it. There's more stuff here than than you'll know what to do, frankly. Um, don't worry about needing to have, by the way, don't worry about needing to have a, a an account. Every, everything you can get to, everything is here. It's not like you're, they don't allow you to get the things. Um, you can do news quiz. This one's really, this gets used a lot. Here we go. Throw it in. Do it as an assignment in my Google Classroom. It wants me to create the assignment and then I can put it into wherever I want to put it into in terms of my topic. 
Easy stuff. Uh, last one. And this is a little esoteric. So if you'll forgive me, this one is called screencasting. So what is screencasting? Well, screencasting is the ability to capture your screen. The thing about that um, makes screencasting viable and useful is that when you do it, you basically are going to have your screen available to demonstrate, to illustrate, to illuminate to kids the topics you're talking about. You might do a screencast to show kids how to do one of those FET simulations that we were just looking at. Uh, because the FET will, for teachers, it has everything in there to teach you how to use the simulations. So if you then go in and you screencast a Matic, why do I use that? Because eh, it's easy. <laughs> um, if you want to use something that's built in to uh, the Chromebooks that you might have access to, Screencastify is in there, works the same way, same idea. Uh, there's nothing here that, you know, it's going to be anything you don't know. I can start one just by clicking here and I can launch the free recorder. I don't have to have an account. I do have an account. Uh, oh, look, they now have available on Chromebooks. That's interesting. That's new. So what will happen is I've just started it now. I may blow up my, my screen here because I'm actually running Collaborate Ultra at the same time I'm doing this. Um, and I think it's basically it's sitting here kind of like, what is going on? Okay. So it's, it's not going to let me do it through the web. It's telling me to download the launcher and I could uh, show that to you. Let's, let's, let's roll the dice here and see what happens if I can blow up the computer. So when I launch my screencast-o-matic, it's going to come up and it's going to show me that it is ready. <laughs> Look at that it's saying, close this window so you can start a new recording because it recognizes what's going on. And then I click on record and then it drops everything down. You see the dotted line around the screen here. And then up here is where you would click on the record button. And then here is where you can say, so what am I using to record with? That's you can see it's already recognizing that I have several ways of recording here. And it's picked up on the fact that I'm talking to my Yeti, my Yeti mic. I can record just the screen. I can record just a webcam. Or I can have the beauty of having both. So I can have a little square up here in the upper corner. Actually, I can tell it where I want to put it. And it can be me while I'm explaining things. So that is all there is to that. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel all that. And I'll go ahead and cancel or quit the screencast-o-matic. It records your voice and records whatever you're doing on the screen. And when it's finished, what it does then is it gives you the file. So in other words, you get a little file. Uh, what I do with mine, and you all know this because you see them, is I upload my screencast-o-matic things that I create to a YouTube channel. Why do I put them in a YouTube channel? Because then it becomes very, very easy then for me to go into YouTube through my Google Classroom and find the various uh, videos that I have made that I can then just bring into my Google Classroom. So what's the idea here? The idea here is, is for you to go in, play with these various tools that we just looked at. Uh, find one, or, you know, if you got a couple that you like, go for it. But find at least one that you think you would like to put into your Google Classroom so that uh, when you get done, you'll be able to uh, give me and as so far, I can see two people's classrooms, which is really exciting. Uh, and you, I can get into your classroom and see what's going on in there. And when I go in, look at this classroom, I'll see a place in your classroom where you have put your 
interactive lesson that you created. You can use any of these tools. So what we're going to be doing now, before you get too carried away here, you're going to be using an interactive lesson. So it can be anything that you find, uh, but then you're going to create and you're going to create an assessment to go along with that. Don't worry here about assigning the completed lesson to your classmate and Steve. You can just basically create it and put it in there and then I will see it. This was quick. I hope it wasn't too quick. Um, next week we'll do assessment. Let me show you one thing about next week. When we look at assessment next week, this is the tools that we'll be looking at. We're going to be looking at Google Forms. Google Forms is a part of the Google Classroom. It's very easy to use. Uh, Google Forms has the ability of being uh, a test creation tool as well as a survey creation tool. And I think one of the things that elevates the Google Classroom from just a turn-in site, um, a CMS, is the ability to actually have kids give back information about how they think about how the class is going. And you can do that through uh, the questions, which is also a part of the, of the Google Classroom. Nothing wrong with that. But Google Forms allows you to not only do that, but actually accumulate data. We're going to take a look at something called Nearpod. Nearpod is hot, 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 hot right now. It's one of the really hot tools that's out there. I will give you access to my Nearpod account, and you may go into that Nearpod account. You see, I'm a gold user. <laughs> you can use my Nearpod account to create your own Nearpod content. I'm going to ask you to, if you so choose to, I want you to create your own Nearpod, but you can put stuff in the Nearpod that other people have created. Um, it is goodness I, I it is an amazing tool as you just saw there i could start off with a google slide if i slides with it and put it in this is what i want to show you look at this when you go in here to add you can add content you can add web content you can add an activity look at the content it lets you have so here's your regular old powerpoint google slides Here's a 3D thing. Oh, looky here. You've got your good old friends from FET. They can come in here. You've got the ability to go to um, a field trip. In other words, you can actually go visit someplace. Here's your B BBC video. Sway, which is an Adobe um, slideshow tool. There's a slideshow. There's a video. There's audio. There's a PDF viewer. In other words, you've got more stuff in here than you know what to do with. You can add web content. All you got to do is just put the web content in there. In other words, the website you'd like them to use. But there's where it gets really interesting. So now you can put in ways of checking for understanding. And you can have time to climb, open-ended question, matching pairs, quiz, draw it, draw it. This is a biggie, by the way. Uh, schools that have iPad use, they use this one a lot. Uh, collaborative, so you can have kids working together. You can take polls. In other words, you can do surveys right there in the class. I'll show you how all this works next week. You can use a Nearpod as a live tool. In other words, you're actually taking the temperature in the classroom. You can use it as a way of doing forming this formative assessment live in the classroom. Or you can take it and let me give you a sense here. So see, you can do a live lesson. So if we go in here and we click on that, it then tells the students to put this code into their Nearpod app that's on either, they're either in the app, on their device, in other words, a phone, a tablet, a computer, or they're at nearpod.com. When they put in this code, what it does is it then allows you as the teacher to take over their computer device, tablet, phone, whatever it is, and then you're running the show. Look what else it does. So it'll let you create all this and share it to the Google Classroom. 
so that they don't even need to go to the Nearpod. They go to the Google Classroom and it all comes up. The other way that you can do it is I'm going to end the session. The other way you can do it is when you're finished or before you even do it, you can do student paste. So in other words, this isn't live. This is they get they work through the slides themselves. That's just the code that takes them to whatever the thing is that you created. So once again, I can send that to my Google Classroom and it's sitting there waiting for them uh, to do at their pace. That's what it means by student pace. Uh, when I first started using Nearpod, I used to call this homework. Uh, in fact, it was called homework. I didn't I didn't make up that. It was what they called it. They called it homework. Now they call it student paste, which is fine. I have no problem with that. The last thing that we'll go over next week is my fave right here. This is Ed Puzzle. Why does Steve love Ed Puzzle? Steve gets all gooey and gushy about Ed Puzzle. Let me tell you why. So one of the most powerful tools that we have as teachers now especially uh, within the Google Classroom. This is the ability to go out and use the um, YouTube. And the beauty of the YouTube is that we have a, this enormous repository of stuff we can use. What's wrong with it? It's based upon somebody else's um, ideas. Sure. But the beauty of it is you can find a YouTube video that you have created and you or you have found not that you created it, but you found it and you can add your voice. So in other words, you can wipe out the entire narration of that video and put in yours or you can drop in and drop out. So in other words, you can add at the beginning of the video, your voice explaining what's gonna be going on in this video. You can jump in at various points. This is what you're seeing down here, by the way. You can jump in at various points in the video and say, okay, now pay attention to what that, what she or he, the video, what they just said, because it's really important for what's coming next. And the other thing you can do that makes Edpuzzle just sit up and go crazy is right over here. You can put in your own little formative assessments into the Edpuzzle. And you can then check for understanding. It's just that easy. Um, and you can, you can add classes to it. Uh, by that, I mean, you can connect it to the Google Classroom, and I'll show you how to do all that. Good stuff. I love, love Edpuzzle. Um, and then here's, you can do a code, you can do it the link, but we'll show you how to do it through the Google Classroom. So that's what we'll do next week. We'll take a look at these really, I, I just can't say enough about, I think in the assessment uh, area, because of Google Forms is easy. It to me is that first tool you reach for when you need to take the temperature of the room, you need to find out, did we really get that right? Uh, I love Nearpod because I can literally build really rich uh, material for kids to demonstrate their understanding through. Um, and then with the Edpuzzle, I think what Edpuzzle does is it allows us to have the ability to use that incredible, incredible collection of video material that YouTube represents, but then bring it in to my classroom, make it clear to everybody that this is what I think it is about and how it then fits into what we do in my classroom. As always, we are rapidly going to finish up here. Um, as I said at the beginning, 
the university is into this. Um, we're going to do everything online. Well, you've been doing everything online now for a while with me. So we're fine. We will finish this up next week. And then after that, we will take a look at coding. Again, this is one of my favorite things. We'll take a look at how to do coding with kids. Uh, why, did I, why do I love coding so much? I think what the thing about coding is, is that I love the whole idea of kids understanding how to um, use something called OOPS, O-O-P-S, Object-Oriented Programming. And the reason why I like it is because, one, it allows you to see how you can manipulate an object on the screen using code, which is very easy to understand. Two, it helps kids to think, to think how they can problem solve. If I want this thing to do that, what do I need to do? It also teaches them how to handle failure. And the beauty of coding is, well, if it didn't work, try something else. You know, there's, there are rules that aren't very hard to understand. And then once you get into the whole process, it becomes something really, really fun. And what we'll end up doing is we'll just make a very simple little game kind of thing. Um, for the VR, AR, we'll go ahead and do this one. It's hard for me to do it with... Um, without you being in a room with me where we can actually play with stuff, but we can still do things. I can, I can show you how you can go in and create your own little world. Um, and when you do that, what I have done with kids is I've asked them to create a, uh, design their house in the future. Give me, there's lots of really good stuff. And uh, again, this is something that if you are interested in it and would like to try it with kids, just yell at me uh, and I can help you set up a class. As you can see, I've already got a class set for us. And uh, you could have your own space. You can create an assignment. See, there's module seven, there's ours. And so here's what people have done in the assignment in the past. Um, we created all kinds of interesting little fun things uh, in last semester's class. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at those. And then here's your final. If you, you know, one of these people that need to know what your final looks like, there it is. And we will be done. Stephen, were you trying to talk to me? Did I not hear you? Being careful here not to close out my, <laughs> I did this, uh, I did this on, uh, Wednesday. I did this Wednesday. I accidentally closed it out. As always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, if you need to talk to me, I'm always here for you. 502-457-2937. Oh, yeah. Well, one last thought. I went in today into the grading center and I graded everything that has been turned in. Uh, I hope those of you who are still kind of in module two, three, um, I hope you're not going to wait to the very last second. It's not like it's a lot of stuff you have to do. It's just there's a lot of module stuff, and I don't want you to get too far behind. If you do get to the point where you're really freaking out, please let me know, and then we can either meet up this way, uh, or you can come down and sit in my office, and we can sit, and we can do it together. Whatever you need to do to have success in this class. Drop me a text, 502-457-2937. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, stay well. Wash your hands. Sing happy birthday twice. Uh, do all the things that we're being told to do. And let's get through this together. Were you trying to talk to me, by the way? I'm closing out all these tabs. Stephen? No, I can hear. Okay. I'm going to assume that you are good. And all you're doing this week is you're going to be looking at the engaging pieces. And then next week, we'll take a look at the assessment. Are you all under any kind of plans for, are they going to shut school down on you folks?
there in Tennessee? I can't hear you. Is it me or is it you? Let me go in and look at this real fast. I can tell. Nope. I can hear the head puzzle. I just can't hear you. We will not lose any time in this course. Just so you know. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go here. Well, you're not texting me, so I'm going to assume you're okay, my friend. See you later.